Hey, what's up guys? It's Kevin from KM Outdoors. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, coming up to the end of February and uh, not much going on here on the island. But I had a couple of you guys message me and ask me about my boat. So just going to do some work on it. It's all tucked away for the winter now, but just going to do some work on it and uh, replace a couple of parts. Figured I'd bring you guys along with me and uh, show you what I like and what I don't like about it. All right, guys, this is her. She's a uh, 1989 Grumman aluminum 16 foot boat with a 40 horsepower Evinrude two stroke and uh it gets the job done i'm gonna show you around I'll just show you a little bit of the shape of the hull here so um it's not a v hull but it's also not a flat bottom it's uh i don't know if you can tell from that video but you have a little bit of an angle right there so that that hull design uh i do like i am a, a fan of it it's treated me real well and it allows me to get into the shallows real easy uh, all this right here, this is something I looked for when I bought the boat. It's all welded, welded, welded. So not many rivets on this boat. You have your rivets up top. Uh, on, the, on the side, there's a couple of them, but there's really not too many. All the major joints are welded, and that's a big thing to look for, I think, when you're buying a John boat or a, or a duck boat. All right, this is the inside. Not much to her. Uh, about four and a half feet up front. And uh, as you go back, it tapers off, and uh, you got about six, uh, just over six feet in the back, maybe six and a half feet in the back. Um, you do have two compartments right here. You got a little uh, light preserver and ore, funnel in there, and a fire extinguisher and another light preserver there. Um, this is the steering compartment here. I do carry a portable VHF radio on board as well as two of these radios. What I like to do with these is um, I keep one on the boat and I keep one in the blind. And, uh, you know, when I go chase birds, they can kind of communicate a little bit. So there's a steering compartment. Uh, works real well. And, you know, you have your throttle right here with your choke. Um, not much to it. Down below, keep a couple of knickknacks. Just the essentials, a throw rope. This is a flare gun with a whistle. And then a dry bag and a first aid kit. So uh, that's really under the, under the uh, console here. That's what I keep. I also keep a little handheld uh, spotlight on here just in case. And uh, it is a key start. And this switch is the uh, trim tilt for the motor. And that's pretty much it. I mean, bare bones. No GPS or anything on here. I got my my seat just like that. A little flip-up seat with my Bayman gloves. If you don't have these, I think you should definitely get them. Uh, I think they were like 30 bucks on Amazon or something. That's a great place to keep them. Keeps them dry. And then going up front here real quick. I'm not even really... Con I don't know if this is even considered a... Uh, a duck boat guys I mean I, I kind of think it's more like a work boat <laughs> so um, this setup right here I have with the buoy um, you throw this there's about I'd say about 17 feet of uh, anchor line on here and you throw this fluke anchor out catches the bottom I just have it hooked right here with an aluminum carabiner so if I'm out uh, if I'm parked on the uh, shoreline or, or just mooring or whatever it is I can just disconnect that carabiner throw it right in the water and this will float to the end of my anchor line so when i go out and retrieve the duck i come back i just look for this buoy sitting in the water i just painted it black just so it didn't stick out too much because it was really bright white so uh, that's just a dock line on the other side and that's it this is the casting deck this doesn't open up nothing happens like that um this is foam inside here and uh, you really can't dig the foam out that's that that's a whole different uh, video i don't know much about boats but i know you you know if you you, you shouldn't take the foam out so <laughs> so that's that's there there's really no storage up front so now another frequently asked question i get about this boat is how many guys can you fit on the boat of course you know you're always always have more guys than you do have room so um the answer for me for this boat and it may be different for you maybe your 16 foot boat can fit something different you know maybe maybe you have a bigger boat or something like that but um for this particular boat uh i like to run two guys and myself that's that's the most i would go in the winter time you have gear you have decoys um cold water 
I like to run two guys and myself. It could it could carry up to uh, I'd say between a thousand and twelve hundred pounds, um, and and still get to a good cruising speed. You know about. I would say 22 to 25 miles an hour. If, if I'm on it alone, um, we'll do about 36 miles an hour with that with that two-stroke motor. So, um, but it's uh, you know it's all about weight distribution. When you have these flat hulls, everything's on one side. You're going to be riding crooked, you know, and uh, and and you don't want that. <laughs> now, as far as uh, seating arrangements on the boat. Obviously, I'm here. I like to sit one guy on this bench facing forward, and then the guy in the front can either sit on his knees and look forward or sit down with his back up against that bank wall with his feet this way, uh, and, and, uh, and we'll ride like that. That casting deck right there, I don't really like to have anybody up on that unless we're really just, you know, we're just going to grab a crippled and we're going real slow or something. Because if you hit a sandbar, uh, you can really, you know, you can go flying off pretty easy. So what I did up front here was I put four of these anchors, one, two, three, four, and um, this will fit crab pots and whatever you got, clam rakes, uh, any of that stuff up here. And you could use those anchors to tie it down pretty well. So I pretty much reserve that whole uh, casting deck uh, or whatever you'd like to call it for gear, decoys, nets, you know, whatever you have uh, as far as gear goes. Now moving to the back, um, I do have a, a high performance uh, fuel water separator filter. It's, uh, I think it's for a much larger motor and much more volume um, fuel that I use, but it works. It's overkill. I replace it every year. It's never failed me, you know. Um, I have a six gallon gas tank and there's a regular battery with a West Marine cover on it. Uh, it's just got a little kit with some essentials, some uh, tools and that, and I have my oil. Um, one thing that I did set up that I don't see on too many boats is obviously the, there's a bilge pump in here. I like to put a separate switch for my bilge pump like that because I don't want to be sitting in the boat and maybe it's drizzling a little bit and um you know you you get a little you know, all of a sudden your bilge pump kicks on when you have a couple ducks uh, paddling up the creek so uh, I like to be able to control it myself turn it on and off when I want to all right we're just sneaking a little peek into the battery box right now um so this big battery right here I do have two of these batteries I rotate them and I keep them on charge and um you know everything's much harder to do in the winter time so i got these little clamp on connectors uh they're great they rust pretty quick so i usually buy two or three at a time and change them out maybe once a month or something um and like i said i just keep rotating the batteries and uh, always keep it on a trickle charge now with the uh with the bilge pump i learned the hard way and you don't want to use this battery up when you're sitting for a while using the bilge pump and then you can't start the boat so uh, i keep a little 12 volt battery down there and that does the bilge pump it's never failed me uh i don't know what the dimensions on but you can find it on amazon it wasn't wasn't anything too crazy um but that's what i do so it's two separate batteries on the boat all the time i do also keep it on a trickle charger in the summertime because i use this boat all year long so um when there's a battery left in the boat in the summertime i will hook up the trickle charger which i have it disconnected right now just because i'm working on it but um usually anytime i have it out here i just keep it connected as long as the battery's in it and uh that's it you know the little solar charger it keeps it charged and ready to go anytime you're ready to use it so so nothing's more frustrating to me than getting to the boat ramp and not being able to go out and have fun with the, your friends or family uh, because of some stupid issues that could have been prevented by uh, a little preventative maintenance. So every time I go out, I make it a habit to check, um, you know, I just do a rundown of the motor, make sure the prop's in good shape, make sure there's nothing going on uh, visually that I, uh, you know, that doesn't look right, uh, make sure the uh, plug's in good condition. Uh, make sure all my safety equipment is in good condition. Every six months, I make sure I change the gear oil. I make sure I change the uh, spark plug. It's a two-stroke motor, so the spark plugs really take a beating. Um, on the yearly basis, I do the fuel filter. I do the water pump. I do uh, the lights on the trailer. 
I do the tires on a trailer. Um, all this stuff is pretty cheap. I mean, the only thing that I ever pay anybody to do is the water pump on the motor. I just don't want to get involved in tearing it apart. It doesn't sound like too difficult of a job, but uh, I just don't have the time to do it. So, um, but, but you keep up with the preventative maintenance and you do all that stuff. Uh, I don't think I missed anything. Um, I'm just trying to think batteries you know simple test of the batteries make sure you got the right voltage make sure they're holding charge um you know that's that's real easy stuff you know a lot of times i'll start my boat up right here at my house before i go out you know or the day before i go out just to make sure everything is good to go make sure you have good water flow and uh that's really it you know you treat it good it'll treat you good not much to it pretty simple boat um what i like about it is it's been very reliable and um it's 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 got the job done in the i think a year and a half maybe almost two years i've had it i think i gotta look back but um if i could change anything about it i would say i would like a boat with a little bit higher wall um there's been a couple of times where i've took it out in some real nasty weather and you know i mean we hunt the inner bays i never really leave the uh, inlet too often and we had some green water come over the bow as we were chugging along and uh, luckily you know that build pump was there and i'm pretty familiar with the uh, the water in the area that i hunt and uh you know it wasn't really an issue but i think if we had a boat with some higher walls it probably would be a lot a lot better but um this is it gets the job done i'm happy with it and uh i use it year round for everything i i, I throw the the crab pots off of here i clam off of it fish off of it and uh it works very well for me so all right guys i hope you enjoyed the tour of the boat as much as i enjoyed bringing you the content hopefully it helps you out in making some decisions on your own boat or a boat that you're looking to buy until next time guys like follow subscribe uh hit that bell leave a comment instagram kmcgill underscore everything helps guys i appreciate you all so much thank you very much for making this possible and uh until next time guys be safe Thank you.